Hey guys, welcome back to the Prometheus series. In the introduction to the Prometheus chapter, we explored what Prometheus is and its primary functions. In this chapter, let's deep dive into various components that make up Prometheus. Understanding these components in depth is crucial for using Prometheus power in observability and monitoring. So without any further delay, let's get started. The core component of Prometheus is Prometheus Server. This core component is responsible for collecting metrics from various applications. Not only applications, but it can also be configured to scrape bare metal servers, Kubernetes clusters, database instances and more. These are called targets in Prometheus terminology. Prometheus collects metrics from these configured targets by scraping the HTTP endpoints. Once Prometheus scrapes or in simple terms pulls metrics from a target over HTTP, it stores the metrics as a time series data in time series database. The data from this TSDB is stored locally on disk and by default it's only retained for 15 days. However, this duration can be easily increased with a simple configuration or we can configure it to store the data on remote storage such as S3. Furthermore, this Prometheus server provides an API to query the data from the TSDB. Clients like Grafana and the Prometheus UI can query this data for visualization. So in short, the Prometheus server is responsible for collecting metrics from various sources, storing the metrics in a time series database and providing an HTTP API for querying these metrics. Now let's say we have a to-do application and we want to monitor this application. But this time, we want to capture key metrics related to our application like number of to-do items created. These metrics are not infrastructure related like CPU usage or memory usage. They are custom metrics specific to our application. Since these metrics are not generated by default, we must add some code to our application to generate these metrics. In this case, number of to-do items. This process of adding code to expose metrics from our application is referred to as instrumentation. We can achieve this with Prometheus client libraries. Prometheus officially supports client libraries for Go, Java, Python, Ruby and Rust. Don't worry, we will see how to use these client libraries practically in later chapters. Well. While we can instrument our applications to get metrics in Prometheus format, certain places like Linux systems, MongoDB cannot be instrumented directly as we don't own them. This is where exporters come into play. These exporters help us fetching the existing metrics from the systems, then convert them into Prometheus compatible format and finally expose them via HTTP endpoint. You might have heard about some exporters like Node Exporter, MongoDB Exporter, etc. So these exporters are like intermediate layers between Prometheus and our actual applications which help us fetching the existing metrics from the actual application, then convert them into a Prometheus compatible format and finally expose them via HTTP endpoint. Some examples of exporters are Node Exporter which gets the metrics from the Linux node and convert them into a Prometheus compatible format and finally providing those metrics over HTTP endpoint. One more example is MongoDB Exporter which gets the metrics from MongoDB. We will see how Node Exporter works with hands-on in later chapters. So once exporters provide metrics over HTTP endpoint, Prometheus pulls the metrics from exporters instead of directly pulling from the actual application. Don't worry, we will see how node exporter works with hands-on in later chapters. Cool, if you see so far, Prometheus is primarily a pull-based monitoring system, meaning that the target exposes the metrics through an API and Prometheus calls this API and gets the metrics and stores in the database. However, there will be cases where some applications run for a very short time and goes off, like bad jobs and lambda functions which last only for few seconds. In this case, there is a possibility that by the time Prometheus server fetch the metrics in a timely manner, these short-lived applications may go by completing its work. For these scenarios, Prometheus has a component called Push Gateway. 
These short-lived applications can send their metrics to the push gateway and from there the Prometheus server can pull the metrics. In other words, the push gateway serves as a scrape target that represents other targets. This is like an intermediate storage for the metrics. So we should be using it mindfully as it doubles the amount of storage required to store the metrics. Please note that this approach is particularly useful for collecting metrics from the jobs that do not have long running HTTP endpoints. So far so good, but we are in the world of containers and everyone is deploying their applications as pods onto Kubernetes nowadays. These pods are constantly added or removed to scale up or down. They never remain constant. Manually configuring these target pods for Prometheus to scrape each time a pod is added or deleted can be a tedious and error prone task. To address this challenge, there must be a way to automatically discover and monitor different targets as these targets come and go frequently in the container world. This is where the service discovery component of Prometheus comes into the play. With this service discovery component, Prometheus automatically discovers the targets as they are added or removed handling the task of scraping for us. This automated approach ensures that there is no need for manual management of the ever-changing list of targets in the monitoring setup. We will be discussing more about service discovery with hands on in the later chapters. Cool! Now we know how to collect the metrics from different types of targets. And also you know that these metrics are stored in the time series database. But where can we view them in a readable format? For the same, by default Prometheus comes with a UI that can be accessed on port 9090 on the Prometheus server which lets us search the stored metrics, apply functions and preview some graphs. However, users can create dashboards and integrate their favorite visualization software such as Grafana. Stay tuned for the complete walkthrough of Prometheus UI. Please note that Prometheus UI is primarily useful for ad hoc queries and debugging. For creating actual graphs or dashboards, Grafana is recommended. These metrics are not just used for dashboards, but also used to receive notifications when something goes wrong. With Prometheus, we have the capability to define rules to receive notifications on meeting certain conditions. When these alerting rules are met, the Prometheus server triggers the alert manager. Based on the alerts it receives, the alert manager sends notifications through various channels including Slack, Teams, email, etc. This alert manager makes Prometheus function as a monitoring and alerting tool. So to summarize, Prometheus collects metrics from the configured targets at regular intervals, stores them in a local or configured time series database, displays the results in a Prometheus UI and can trigger alerts if certain conditions are met. This all-in-one package monitors our entire system for resource utilization, performance, availability, errors and more. I am sure you found it informative. Stay tuned to get your hands dirty with Prometheus. My name is Pawan Tapu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the content, Please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.